<laughs> Tuco Salamanca is one of the most recognizable faces and memorable characters from Breaking Bad. Played by Raymond Cruz, Tuco is a high-ranking member of the cartel, a drug kingpin who is the nephew of Hector Salamanca and the cousin of Lalo and Marco and Lionel, often referred to as the Salamanca twins. In season 1 of Breaking Bad, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman are in search of a distributor for the crystal meth they have cooked, and they are introduced to Tuco. From the off, Tuco is shown to be a violent and unstable psychopath. He snorts some of the meth which Jesse presents to him, and then goes on to beat Jesse. It takes Walt to perform a Tuco level act of craziness, that is to blow up Tuco's hideout and threaten to kill himself and Tuco to gain Tuco's respect, and the two agree to a distribution deal. Tuco remains as crazy as ever throughout. In a subsequent junkyard deal scene, high on meth, Tuco viciously beats his own subordinate to a pulp, even showing off his bloodied knuckles as he celebrates the murder. Tuco later kidnaps Walt and Jesse, and plans to take them to Mexico where they will cook 24-7. After a tense and suspenseful series of events involving a failed poisoning attempt, a fair bit of screaming and a whole lot of bell ringing, Tuco is killed by Walter's brother-in-law, DEA agent Hank Strader. Tuco returns for Breaking Bad's prequel show Better Called Saul, where he is still as crazy as ever, though ever so slightly subdued as the character has yet to become addicted to crystal meth. His behaviour becomes increasingly erratic, and we're told of a story in which Tuco killed one of his closest friends by shooting him point blank in the face with a shotgun because he had a slight suspicion he was ripping him off. After assaulting Mike Ehrmantraut, Tuco is sent to prison in season 2, and we later hear that he had his sentence extended after stabbing another prisoner and assaulting a prison guard, and that's the last we see of him. Tuco is perhaps the perfect character, given how terrifying and insane he is, to highlight to our protagonists, Walt and Jesse in season 1, just what kind of crazy world they found themselves in by messing in the world of drugs and meth. Tuco's scenes are among some of the most intense of the series, and you just never know what Tuco is going to do next. In fact, neither did the cast and crew it appears, as for example, Raymond Cruz putting out a cigarette with his tongue was improvised and unplanned. Interestingly, Cruz studied meth addicts to prepare for his role, and even called back to his difficult childhood for his part as Tuco Salamanca. In an interview, he spoke about his experiences growing up, saying, I come from a long line of criminals. I have a lot of relatives that are hardcore gangbangers. 18th Street, Barrio Southgate. I have uncles that go way back to old, old Los Angeles gangs. For us, violence was a daily occurrence. I saw someone get shot in front of me at point-blank range and die. The brains came out the back of his head. I was only 12. There was one incident that I could relate directly to Breaking Bad and Tuco. When I was 13, the cops were called to our neighbourhood because there was a guy who was high on PCP and running around naked. He jumped on the hood of the police car and stomped in the windshield barefoot and he was completely manic, so amused and enthralled by this. We were sitting on the porch watching all this. It was this weird display of superhuman strength. There was another moment where we were woke up in the morning in East LA and there was just a dead guy laying in our yard. I'll give you another one. One time, one of our uncles came to visit in a stolen Cadillac in the 80s, and he was a heroin addict from the gang Florencia 13. He was high on heroin and trying to sell us the Cadillac. After he left our house, he drove through the neighbor's wall and then drove down the street. This is what I'm talking about. For his role as Tuco, Cruz fully immersed himself into the mindset of his character in order to deliver an authentic performance. He said, I've never looked at Tuco as being a bad guy. I've always seen him as the hero of his own story, and someone who has to defend what he's fighting for, and who will go to any length to protect what he needs to protect. Jimmy's able to reason with him in the desert because he's able to appeal to his sense of justice. The way that Tuco looks at things is fear. The thing that happens later on in Breaking Bad is he gets affected by the blue meth, and the drugs completely distort his perception of things, so the drugs heighten his emotions. But normally he has a huge heart. He's like a ferocious pit bull, and you have to be careful when you cross his path. 
Interestingly, for being such a memorable aspect of both Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, Raymond Cruz actually wanted to be killed off the show, citing the fact that he found the role exhausting to play, especially since he was a regular on the show The Closer, and was shooting the two shows simultaneously, often flying out on weekends to film his Breaking Bad gig, and then back again for his role as a detective on The Closer. He has said, I asked them to kill me. Honestly, I wasn't looking forward to coming back and doing the part. It's really difficult to pull off. They were like, we want you to come back and do eight more episodes. And I said, no, I'll do one more and that's it. You guys have to kill me. They're like, we've never heard of an actor that wanted to die. And I'm like, you don't understand. This part's really hard. Cruz has spoken about the difficulties of playing Tuco on Breaking Bad, saying, in the first few episodes I did, I would hurt my voice. I'd get injured every time I did it. I almost broke my nose. I pulled muscles. You walk away and you're damaged goods. And you go, oh man, I can't imagine doing this week after week. Then I'd go back. I'd fly to Albuquerque at night and shoot on Saturday and Sunday. Then I'd go back and shoot The Closer and then come back to shoot Breaking Bad. It was relentless. Then when you're not shooting, you're studying for the next day. What you're watching is condensed. That's days and days of shooting scenes for 12 to 14 hours. It's a lot of hard work. And so physically, emotionally, mentally draining. So when they finally killed him, I was happy. There's nothing fun about it. It's a great character, but to try to pull it off is really difficult. It's really high energy. It's relentless. It's very physical and it wears you out. You get very drained. Still though, Cruz was happy how Tuco was killed off. I love how they did it, the actor said. Some people are hard to kill. I think it would be really hard to kill this character if you just didn't do it violently and swiftly. The shootout was pretty big and it was a good direct hit. He was willing to face it and he knew it was coming. So it's all very interesting when you think about it. Breaking Bad's writers actually had a much larger part envisioned for Tuco, with him supposed to be a major player of season 2. But with Cruz finding it challenging, playing such a boisterous role on top of his part in The Closer, they found a way to write him out of the story in dramatic fashion. I mean, he was in his late 40s in the early days of Breaking Bad. It can't have been easy to play a demanding role like Tuca on top of filming another show. I wonder if Cruz would have made an effort to stay on for longer had he known what a lasting impact Breaking Bad would have. After all, it is thought that it wasn't until season 4, when Breaking Bad was added to Netflix, that the show really blew up. But I'm sure Cruz doesn't mind and is happy to have his role the way it was in the show. Cruz also did say he liked playing the part and of course came back for Better Call Saul. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more on Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, consider subscribing to the channel. And thanks for watching. Before we finish, I just want to thank my patrons, Andre Millington, Nicholas Curtis and Dirk K. And also my channel members, the new on Goam24, Rikers and Michael Awatwee.